Sorry, but two-factor authentication is just not as secure as you think it is. Our username and passwords are floating around the for sale section on the dark web, so we rely on two-factor authentication as a way to prove to the system that we are who we say we are. The concept is solid. The lowest form of 2FA is the email confirmation of this OTP or one-time password. This is just a fraction better than having none of this at all, as the likelihood of somebody having access to your email is pretty high if they bought your username and password. Now the OTP idea is solid, but the execution with email is just terrible. So the next level up is via text message or SMS. Unlike email that can be accessed from anywhere in the world, to access somebody's text messages, you need to either have their phone or be able to clone it. You know that you can call your cellular provider and after answering a bunch of security questions, basically they'll activate your new SIM card. Well, scammers and hackers do the same thing. They call the cellular provider, pretend to be you, and remember, they bought a list of your information so they can answer all those basic security questions. And besides, they typically have somebody on the inside that does that SIM swap for them anyway. And of course, once they do that, they have access to your OTP text messages. Now, I wanna be clear, this method is a much better than an email OTP and certainly a million times better than having no two-factor authentication. But OTP via SMS isn't ideal for two reasons besides the whole cloning thing. Firstly, and this actually happened to me, do you have a voicemail password? Most people don't. And as you know, you can call to retrieve your voicemail from any phone, not just your cell phone. So what these guys do, they tell the system, hey, don't send me the OTP via text messages, rather call me. They do it at three in the morning, you're sleeping, that phone call goes to voicemail, they log in, you don't have a password, and they retrieve your voicemail. Now, the second reason why I don't like OTP via SMS is because I have to give these platforms my cell phone number. Why? They know that your cell phone is gold because most of us don't change our phone numbers that often. So now they have another data point to track us around the web besides the IP address, which they know that you can mask anyway with a VPN. So let's look at what I call the bare minimum that everybody should have, and that is an authenticator app. An authenticator app essentially uses something called a time-based one-time password or TOTP. When you fire up the app, you will see a six digit number that is automatically generated and constantly changing every 30 seconds. This is the code that you will need to provide once you log into the website after your username and password. The huge plus of this method, there is no SIM to clone and it is tied into your device. The big minus is that if you lose your phone and you're locked out of your account, you are screwed. Unless you've saved the recovery codes. I'm gonna have a link in the description to the most popular authenticator app, which is Google Authenticator, and that shows you how to create and save your backup codes. Now, there is some thinking that the authenticator apps made by companies like Google and Microsoft are there just to spy on you and keep track of your activities. So if you don't like that, well, you can use a third party developer like Authy. And speaking of Google Authenticator, I'm so confused as to why there isn't a pin or a fingerprint requirement to access the app that's on the phone. Well, it seems crazy. Now, if you really wanna have what is probably the best security method available to public today, then you need a physical key, something like the Google Titan or the Yubico key. These are physical keys that are either inserted into the USB slot on your computer or your phone, or are NFC enabled, or are Bluetooth enabled. When you log into an account that you've set up to use your key as your 2FA method, you will need to either touch the key or tap it on your phone or link it to Bluetooth. This basically shows the system that you are who you are and you have the physical key with you. I will mention that nothing is foolproof. There has been some research that shows that these keys can actually be cloned. However, if you're somebody of that caliber, who somebody is the high profile individual, you probably need to have a security specialist do an assessment of your risk. Most of us just wanna keep the creepy guys out of our systems. Cons of this method is that there is a once-off cost to this and not all keys are available in every country. And of course, you will need to have the key with you when you travel. I'm gonna have some links to this all in the description below. At the very least, enable two-factor authenticator app. It's free and instantly will elevate your level of security. Let me know if you want me to show you how to do that. And in the meantime, check out this video over here where I show you hidden trackers inside your email that are sold to identity resolution companies 
Also check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe and I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.